In this week's video, we're going to start load development for this year's hunting load. We're going to be using Hodgkin Varget as well as the 150 grain Spear Gold Dot. If you're not reloading for hunting, don't worry, have no fear. The information we're going to share today is going to be applicable to far more than hunting loads, but that's going to be our primary focus for today. If you've been watching our channel for a while, you might be familiar with the 135 grain Burger Classic Hunter and Alliance Reloader 26 load that we've worked up previously. I've actually hunted with that for several years and honestly had intended to do it again. However, I've switched barrels on my Ruger Precision Rifle and the load that I developed for that, it doesn't particularly care for. It's not that it doesn't work, I was just hoping for a little bit better. Though I haven't given up on it completely, I am running out of time. The day I publish this video, I'm going to have somewhere around 13 days to get my final load development selected and loaded, which is cutting it a little too close for my taste. So we're going to be trying more than one. But in today's video, we're going to be concentrating on three at Winchester. The components we have left on the table is what we'll be discussing today. And though we've actually had experience with all these different components, we haven't put them together in 3.8 Winchester until today. If you're watching this anytime where it's close to the publishing date, you're probably going to be aware that getting projectiles has been a little bit of a difficulty lately, especially particular hunting projectiles that I've wanted. Though I had no problem getting the 135 grain classic hunter that we've moved off the table. The 150 grain gold dots that we have on the table have been out of stock for quite a while, at least everywhere I've been looking. But luckily we have a few on the table. We finished the load development we were doing with them in the 30-06, and we've got a few left over for 308. When it came to powder selection for these 150 grain gold dots, velocity is certainly more of a consideration than it would normally be for me. But most shots I will take probably aren't too far away. I would like to have effective range out to a reasonable distance. So when, when I was initially looking for powders, a temperature stabilized powder that was giving me close to the maximum velocity was what I wanted to select. Some of the top three that I would have picked, Varget, which is on the table, AR Comp, and H4895. The last two, unfortunately, I have none of, and I don't seem to find any stock anywhere. But I've got a reasonable amount of Varget, and I think it's going to perform wonderful for us today. And since we've had experience with it, we've also had time to find a primer that it seems to work well with. Now, reading online, I've heard plenty of good experiences with the CCI 200, the BR2, as well as the Fed 210. I don't have a significant amount of the CCI 200s or the BR2s. I do have a good amount of the 210s, but I just haven't had the luck that everybody else seems to have online. Today's primer is a large rifle primer by s and I've actually tested these with Varget before, and this, believe it or not, has given me some of the best performance that I've been able to get as far as consistent velocities are concerned with Varget. I haven't seen them on a shelf in a long time. However, I know I'm going to have plenty of these to finish my load development. We know we've had a good performing projectile. We know we should be getting some good velocity out of our powder. And we know we've been able to get some low standard deviations with this particular primer and powder combination. So the first thing I really like to do when I start out with a new powder combination is do a velocity string to make sure our load data is safe and to see if there's any possible velocity nodes that we can load on. Coming up with our load data is a little bit interesting. Depending on what manual you look at or what set of load data you, you get, maxes are, seem to be all over the place for this. I did some work with a similar projectile in quick load, so I'm very certain that all the loads we're going to test today are at least going to be safe in my rifle. So let's just get right into our load data. Again, this is the 150 grain gold dot by Spear. The brass we're going to be using is from Hornady. It's four times fired at this point. The primer we're using is the s and Large Rifle Primer. Varget's going to be our powder. We're going to be loading 43.6 grains to 47.2 grains in 0.2 grain increments. The cartridge overall length that we selected is 2.750 inches with a CBTO of 2.171 inches. Quick load is estimating at that 47.2 grain charge. We should be getting all the way out to 2804 feet per second and be just under max pressure at that charge weight. So getting right into our data, we're going to start off at 43.6 grains. At 43.6 grains, our initial velocity was 25, 25 feet per second. And our velocity increased fairly consistency. Our highest velocity at 47.2 grains was 2788 feet per second. Quick load estimate was 2804 feet per second. 2788 is pretty close. But one of the most important things we need to look for is make sure our load is safe and we're not hitting pressure. Put a picture of the cases on your screen and you can see it as we go along. There's really nothing to be concerned with as far as pressure signs were concerned. Our fire brass isn't giving us any pressure signs that weren't present in our factory ammunition. Now, when we do this type of velocity test, groups really isn't what we're looking for. But I know some of you guys enjoy that information, so I'll put a quick shot on your screen. 1.828 MOA was our 19 shot group. Didn't really try and shoot for groups, we just want to see where we're at. Keep in mind, our entire test had an extreme spread of 263 feet per second. So having a little bit of point of impact shift really shouldn't surprise anyone. 
But our real goals for today's test were to make sure we were staying under safe velocity and to see if there are any good velocity plateaus on our chart to see where we wanted to load next. Looking at our chart, it's fairly clear to me at 46.6 and 46.8 grains, 2759 and 2758 feet per second are maybe not a huge node, but certainly look to be a reasonable velocity node, very close to max charge. Even if we want to push it all the way up to 47 or 47.2 grains, there is only extreme spread of five between those two values as well. But since I didn't test anywhere above that, I really don't know what's going to happen and what our extreme spread would look like. Keeping in mind, we only have like two weeks to get this done. I'm going to be exploring the range 46.6 grains to 46.8 grains, seeing what those look like, seeing what our groups look like, and hopefully we're going to find our winner in there. One thing I'm certainly pleased with is how well our primer worked in this particular case. In case you're not familiar with the testing that I've done, I've really had some crazy results with Varget in the past, so it's nice to find a consistent performer, and I think this is going to work really well for us. But of course, we need to get some more samples at those levels to see what our groups look like and to see that our standard deviations are going to hold together. If you want to see how this turns out, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I'm going to put a card up to a playlist where we've done a whole bunch of primer testing here on the channel, and you can get an idea how certain powders seem to prefer different primers in different situations. I think there's a lot of good information, and it might just help you zero on the best primer for your application the next time you go to reload. If you'd like to see more load development videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn the bell notification on so you get notified when I post next week's video. I hope to see you come back next week, and until then, stay safe in small groups.